Next, we move on to our second inductee in the category of pioneer. And not knowing George Miller at all until yesterday, I have gotten some stories told to me that the word pioneer, if you have a picture in your head of a pioneer, he's it. He learned the sport, or not the sport, the industry of building surfboards from the, a graduate degree in the School of Hard Knocks. He's blown his own foam. He's tried to formulate resin. He's done things and experimented and had things blow up in his face. He's had moles blow up. I mean, George has done it in a way that you really learn the art of making a surfboard. <laughs> yeah, he got the stoke of surfing in 1960 at Pearl Harbor. He had a pass and uh, Liberty Pass and went to Waikiki to check out what was going on. Never, had never surfed before, and that's where the fire was lit. He started down in Miami to learn the intricacies of making a surfboard and quickly figured out, this place is freaking crazy. I'm, I'm getting out of here. And moved up to Daytona Beach. I asked him, why did you do that? pick Daytona Beach? What was the allure? And it's all about a woman. In 1963, he started the Ormond Beach Surf Shop, which later, later became known as the Daytona Beach Surf Shop, making as many as, I think it was 60 boards a week, working hard, and supplying his main dealer, his top guy, was George Gerlach, Surfer Supply in Ocean City, New Jersey. 65 found him on his way out to California working for Castor Surfboards, and ended up at Dewey Weber's factory, and learning from the greats, learning from the masters. And then, after a couple years out there, figured he'd move back, take it on again. He's done a whole lot. He's been around the block and back again. He's shaping now, doing some great custom work with Bernie Crouch and Mad Dog Surfboards. Ladies and gentlemen, George Miller, our pioneer. Well, it's been a hell of a two days, I got to tell you. It's been a great two days to, to, to be here. And, and uh, honestly, I've, I've seen people I haven't seen in many, many, many years who were major players in what was going on in back in the day. And back in the day was, was back in the day. <laughs> I mean, when uh, Hunter talks about blowing up molds, yeah, I blew a couple molds up because nobody ever told me how much foam to put in there, <laughs> for starters. And, uh, and the resin guys forgot to tell me there was two parts of the chemistry that should never be mixed together at the same time, uh, but uh, that, w that was all good, uh, and it was, a, it was a great learning experience, and, and I have to tell you that uh, I, I am very, very pleased to stand up here in front of what I consider probably to be the greatest tribe, culture, uh, that, that has come out of this great country, and uh, I'm, I'm very honored, and I thank the, uh, the East Coast Surfing Hall of Fame for what they're doing and continuing the preservation of this great history of ours and trying to save it for some of the young folks coming along. I, some of these guys don't even know that, what a shaper was. And, uh, but I'm very pleased to be here, and I, I thank everybody for being here, especially my kids and my good friends and, and uh, Bruce Clellan, who uh, I think probably nominated me and goes back to early Jacksonville days um, and that's it I, I just want to say thank you and it's a pleasure to see all of you folks <laughs> 